So in this segment, we're going to be talking about British journalist Lewis Goodall face plants on uh, Brexit and uh, Northern Ireland real badly. I don't know if he has a research team, but boy, does he need a research team. Also, um, just a pet peeve of mine, he sets out a question why Northern Ireland has become so problematic for the Tories. Doesn't answer the question in this video. I know Global and LBC and Web are trying to get people onto their, you know, their podcast system. But in my opinion, if you set out a question within a tweet, you should then answer or at least try to answer that question within a tweet or say up front you don't have the answers so he starts off very strong and then gets very bad Johnson essentially ended up in a position doing a thing in Northern Ireland that you should never do which was introduce something without consensus and consensus is one of the key planks of the Good Friday Agreement and the peace process that's true you know what he said there strong start consensus is very important um, uh, uh, some things require cross-community consent okay good start because nothing can be done in Northern Ireland politically without every single party being in agreement because every single party, very unusually, and I think sometimes people- That's not true. He said every single party has to be, has to agree with that. Ireland politically without every single party being in agreement because every- That's uh, false. You know, under the accelerated passage procedure, a bill can pass all stages in as little as 10 days, but in no less time, the process skips the committee stage. Accelerated passage procedure requires cross-community support within the meaning of the act. So, you know, if they want accelerated bills to be passed, it would require cross-community consent. Um, but if it doesn't have cross-community consent, it, it just requires a majority, um, like a straight majority. But it, it's just a slower process to be passed. And if you look at the amount of parties within uh, Northern Ireland uh, in Stormont, you've got Sinn Féin, the DUP, um, the uh, Alliance Party, the UUP, the SDLP, and others so you're telling me you need all of these parties to agree for a bill to be passed you can argue you know do they need both sides for a bill to be passed not necessarily true um you can argue based on the numbers that's true but you know again it, what he says there is just it's just wrong you don't need both parties to get an or you know all parties to get an agreement you need a straight majority unless unless right they call for a uh, petition of concern. So a petition con of concern is a mechanism known as um, petition of concern, which will, uh, which can also be altered by the bill. Currently, this enables 30 members, 30 MLAs, to force a matter before the assembly to require cross-community support. So what this means, um, according to Wikipedia, is that certain resolutions must require cross-community support or the support of a minimum of MLAs from both communities to be passed by the assembly. And so there was a certain percentage. So a petitioner concern may be brought by 30 uh, or more MLAs. In such case, a vote on proposed legislation will only pass if supported by a weighted 60% of members voting, including 40% of each of the nationalist and unionist de um, designations present at voting. Effectively, that means provide enough MLAs form a given uh, community agree that community or a sufficient large party in that community can exercise a veto over the assembly's decision. So they don't need uh, all sides. Um, they need most of uh, both sides, or at least, no, just under a majority of both sides, really 40%, but then you need a 60% majority to vote for it. So 60% overall majority, 40% from both sides, if a petition of concern is raised, which has to be raised by 30 or more MLAs. So what Lewis Goodall says is just it's just false. Um, you know, I, and I don't get how, you know, literally about 10 minutes of Googling and asking a person a question, a couple of questions, I found this information out. So uh, what, what's 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 he got on his laptop? You know, what what's going on here? Every single party, very unusually, and I think sometimes people maybe in Great Britain don't always appreciate this, that every single party as part of power sharing has to be in the Northern Ireland government. So the DUP's response... I don't, I don't think that's even true. I don't think every party has to be a part of the Northern Ireland programs. I think you just require the biggest unionist party and the biggest uh, uh, nationalist party. I don't think you need every party to be involved in it. So again, that's just false. They're getting absolutely hammered by their voters because you'll remember, of course, they were once extremely influential with the Tories. They're the ones who gave Theresa May her majority after the 2017 election. They kept John Major afloat for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're the ones who... That I didn't know about the John Major thing. That's interesting. They could have avoided all this if they'd actually supported Theresa May's deal Indeed, to get that through. Because the they rejected place. that as well because they said that wasn't good enough. The protocol for them is much worse than Theresa May's deal. But they're getting hammered basically by their voters saying, what the hell have you done? How have you allowed this to come to pass? Loads of unionists deeply, deeply angry about it. Nationalism, contempt with it. And so what did the DUP's response? They pull out of Stormont, the power, power sharing. sharing executive in Northern Ireland in an attempt to try and assuage their own voters that they're serious about this and they're saying now 
the pro it was a lot more they pulled out stomp for a lot more to a stage you know to kind of um placate their voters it, they did it because they wanted to try and force the tories to um you know get rid of the northern iron broke well that's what it was about they wanted to kind of implode the system in a sense you know to break it apart and say look this system isn't working unless you do something you know bad things are going to happen again in northern ireland and so they tried to put it on the tories to do something to force them to try and pull out of the protocol which didn't happen um so that's what they really wanted from this protocol has to be dismantled just rejected completely removed national is saying no way you can't do that so what basically it's done it's introduced another massive fissure within Northern Ireland politics. And as we all know, Northern Ireland is the last place where you want to introduce new fissures, new divisions, which also expose and basically stick massive fingers and expose old ones. So I think I think he's like so, some of it was fine. Some of it was just factually incorrect, which I find really painful given, you know, the answers aren't, you know, they're not that hard to find. But, you know, why has it been problematic for the Tories? I think he didn't answer the question, so I'll do my best to answer on it, not on his behalf, but on mine. But I think the main the main issue why Northern Ireland has caused the problem is because the the um, the ERG were always under the impression that the Tories would go back on the Northern Ireland Protocol. That's what it was. So they desperately want to cling on to Northern Ireland to keep it as part of the union, which means that if it follows different rules to us, that's a problem for them. The other problem is the better Northern Ireland does because of the Northern Ireland Protocol, the worse it's going to make Great Britain look. Um, it also makes deregulation much more difficult. Um, purely because th there's limits to what they can do, I think, with Northern Ireland being part of the EU single market for goods. And it's just, I think, purely ideological. They want you know massive deregulation and Northern Ireland, they want to be a part of that. They want to drag them down as well. Um, so he failed to answer the question. I think it's the ERG and the infiltration of uh, the Tory party by, you know, kind of UKIP uh, type people. But yeah, he, you know, he, he didn't answer the question. Yes, I'm being a bit pedantic, but I think he can do much better. Lewis Goodall could do much better with his analysis. I don't know what the hell he was talking about here. Um, genuinely quite miffed on it. And I would argue the last place, Northern Ireland is one of the last places you want to introduce new fissures. I think the USA would probably be another one. Um, probably Iraq would be another one amongst other countries that you don't want to introduce new fissures into. But I think his analysis here is not great. And he kind of face plants on Northern Ireland and Brexit because he didn't even answer fundamentally his question. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Was I too mean to him? He gets a bad rap, I think, every time I seem to feature him on the channel. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.